What, certainly, uh, well, uh, let, let's just talk about Christianity, because obviously, if you say religion, you're dealing with, uh, you know, thousands of different views of the supernatural and its, react and its interaction with humans. So let's just stick with Christianity, because that's the one we're most familiar with and that most of the viewers of this are going to be familiar with, and it's the um, predominant religion in the United States. Within Christianity, there certainly are traditions that use that kind of reasoning. You start with the revealed truth and that governs your um, reflection upon um, empirical evidence, shall we say. Uh, it, it trumps logic, reason, and empiricism. But there are many traditions within Christianity and you know, probably the, the, the classic would be in Catholicism, uh, the Jesuits and other orders which, uh, and actually Catholic theology in general, um, gives great weight to both revelation and reason. In fact, there was a um, statement from um, John Paul, the previous pope, um, and I don't know if there's, I, I forget exactly what, but it was re reason and, and, um, and uh, revelation, that wasn't quite the title, but you know, it was a whole um, papal statement about the, uh, the importance of the balance of this, and you cannot have a faith that is only based upon revelation. You, you have to have the combination of both. So, um, one of the interesting things, uh, I, I personally am, am not a believer, uh, but as an anthropologist, I'm not an anti-believer. You know, I, I, have, I have a great interest in religion, and I'm not anti-religious in, in any respect. Um, but one thing I've learned in, in, in my very interesting job, uh, in which I deal with scientists and teachers and uh, theologians and people of faith, is that there's a huge, huge range of theology out there about just this topic, about what is the relationship of the revealed truth of scripture, of tradition, which is also a source of, of religious truth. It's not just the Bible, it's how the Bible is interpreted and that has changed hugely over the years in just about any denomination you can, you can uh, point to. But it's also uh, the tradition, many, many denominations have very strong traditions of looking at the evidence of science uh, or other ways of knowing, of, of, of literature, of, of you know, how do we really know about the human condition. It's not just through science. That's a hugely important way of doing it. But we also understand uh, our nature through other ways of knowing as well, more, more subjective ways of knowing. And weighing all that together and looking at that in, in relationship to what are the, the true concerns of religion, which really have to do with what is the relationship of human beings to this supernatural entity um, and his, her, its, their uh, relationship to us. That's really what religion is all about. Religion really isn't about how Grand Canyon was formed. Trust me on that. Very few people are concerned about explaining the natural world through religion. Um, there's an awful lot of rendering unto science uh, what science is really good at. Where the conflicts arise, it seems to me, is where you get two camps kind of poaching on each other's turf, so to speak. Um, if you talk to people of faith, especially the intelligent design people, interestingly enough, uh, at heart, their major, uh, their major beef with science seems to be that, yes, science is extremely good at explaining the natural world. We are extremely good at telling you why water flows downhill and how electrons work, but also at coming up with really cogent ex explanations for where we came from and how all this diversity of life got here and why the planets are like they are and you know all this good stuff. And the ID people particularly, but most conservative Christians, um, the hair on the back of their neck goes up if the implication is because we are so good at explaining the natural world through science, therefore science is all there is, and take your God and shove it. You know. They don't want to be told that, their, that God, who is very important to them, is irrelevant to the natural world. Now, given that, there's a whole lot of ways within Christian theology that God can interact with the natural world or not. You know, one, 
One kind of, of Christian theology is deism, where God kind of set the whole operation in motion, and then just is sort of sitting back and you know watching it take along, or maybe even not watching it. Maybe he's off someplace else or creating a new universe or whatever. Um, that's not a very satisfactory God to most Christians. Although interestingly enough, the founding fathers of the United States, people like Jefferson and Washington and Franklin and all those guys, they were pretty much deists. They they had this this fabulous God who kind of got everything rolling, but then isn't really around a whole lot. But most Christians want more of a personal God. But how much that more personal God inter interferes or intervenes in nature is something that Christian theology ranges very widely on. And, uh, you know, there, there's some, there's some um, very, uh, there, there is some Christian theology that is, is really not compatible with science. You know, I mean, science is looking at natural explanations for stuff. And if your theology has God coming in and meddling all the time, you know, that, that makes it very difficult to do science. But as it happens, we can do science very well by just restricting ourselves to natural cause, which of course has produced a lot of Christian theologians, or encouraged a lot of Christian theologians to consider that God actually doesn't inter interfere a lot in the natural world, which means science can just go ahead and operate the way it really does. Okay, I'm just going to wind it up with one last question. Um, you just uh, mentioned the Founding Fathers there, um, and that, um, that is another argument that the creationists like to bring up, that um, the Founding Fathers were very it's very important for them to insert God into the U.S. Constitution, and from the beginning, it's always been there, and it, it still is to some extent. Um, do you have um, an opinion on that, or would you like to comment on that? Well, you'd probably be better off getting a historian to comment right. on that. But from from my limited knowledge, God actually doesn't show up in the Constitution. Um, you have um, you have the in, you have the Declaration of Independence. You know, we hold these truths to be self all, all men were created equal and, and endowed by God with certain inalienable rights, etc. And, and by the way, just as a footnote, that is a really misunderstood quote. Um, uh, all men are created equal, we'd say all humans are created equal, doesn't mean they're identical. That is a statement of law. That means that under the law, men, women, uh, rich, poor, property, not property, although the Constitution wasn't too good at that, uh, tall, short, dumb, smart, uh, sick, healthy, all human beings are equal under the law. Um, it doesn't mean that they're all identical, because some of them are tall and short and fat and, and thin and uh, male and female, and they were not identical, but we are equal. Equality should not be confused with identicalness, but that's another topic. Um, God is in the Declaration of Independence. It's not really in the Constitution, as I understand it. But that's one of those empirically determinable points that can be looked at. Okay, well, I think we'll leave it at that. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. Scott. My pleasure. Thank you.